Hello everyone, welcome back to Ashley's 3D Print Shop, your go-to spot for many things 3D printing related. Today we're diving into the exciting world of Bamboo Studio features, specifically focusing on one feature, Mesh Boolean. This was added in August of 2023. I've shown this feature in at least one video and wanted to go into more detail about how to use it. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this update will make your 3D printing journey smoother and more efficient. For those new to the scene, a slicer is software that converts your 3D models into printable instructions for your 3D printer. Think of it as a translator between your creative vision and the final printed masterpiece. It determines how your product will be printed layer by layer. The slicer does have some basic CAD functionality, so you can create, modify alongside slicing and printing. In previous videos, I have shown you basic assembly techniques, which boil down to making parts touch each other, right-clicking and assembling. These fall into parts, negatives, blockers, modifiers. When you assemble these parts, they are joined when you slice, but they are semi-permanent. So when you're in the prepare section, you can move, resize, and make many modifications. So what if you want to finalize your adjustments? This is where Mesh Boolean comes in. Mesh Boolean is the commitment option, marriage. Once you use it, there's usually one way out. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a primitive. And I will show you the, yeah, show you the difference between a normal assembly and a Mesh Boolean union. So we will right click, add a primitive, and we will do a sphere and we will right click add primitive and let's do a cone all right so we have this now normally when you want to combine items you would highlight them both so you can hold down control and select them both or hold shift and select them both uh, or as many items as you have and then when you go to right click you have the option of assemble now once they're assembled a new thing just opened up so I'm in objects process. This assembly are these two guys right here and mesh Boolean up top have now um, shown itself. So if I were to click on this, you'll have the option of doing a union of two parts and the other section will go into difference and intersection. Uh, but let's actually clone this after we bring these a little closer to one another. All right, so let's go to here. All right. All right, so these guys are close. I'm going to clone this. And I will call you mesh for right now, just to keep them uh, separate. So if we go to slice this plate, we'll see that both of these are together. Now, we're going to enact the mesh boolean, so pay attention to what happens over on this side. So again, this is the, the assembly that has a sphere and a cone. This is the mesh that has a sphere and a cone. If I were to right click on this, and if I go to mesh boolean, what will end up happening is both the cone and the sphere get combined into one section. So again, while this one has two pieces, this one it's just one whole piece. If I wanted to um, undo this, uh, typically you would right click and then you would go to split into objects or split in the parts, depending on how, we're, how it was assembled. Uh, same thing here, you would right click and then you can split them and in, back into their parts or their objects. There will be some instances where you cannot um, separate them. Uh, so just keep in mind, keep the, uh, the undo button close by. So if we were to slice this, functionally, they're exactly the same. So we have two items that are effectively joined together. So assembly and the mesh boolean, the biggest difference is this is now, again, one whole part. This is still two separate parts. And since they are two separate parts, I could actually make adjustments to this. So if I were to click on this cone here 
and let's say I wanted to move it on the opposite side or do something different, I can actually grab, uh, you know, this here, I can raise it up. But for this one, it's permanent or semi-permanent. Negative versus difference mesh Boolean. Okay, so I'm going to show you the differences between just using a normal negative and the difference. So let's start with a cylinder and a cube. All right, so let's bring these together. And of course, everything sort of starts with a basic assembly. So um, highlight them both, right click, assemble. And we're gonna make a few of these. So let's clone this and we'll do it eh, four times. So we'll have five total. So I'm gonna leave some over here. All right, so normally when you are using negative um, parts, you could select your one item. And let's say I wanted to um, cut out a the cylinder from this cube here. So I've selected that. I'm gonna go down to the cylinder and we'll right click and we'll change the type to a negative. And then I, of course, can do the opposite. In this case, let's say I wanna keep the cylinder, but I wanna get, um, sort of take a chunk out of it in a cube shape. So I can go to the cube, I can right click, change type, and change that to a negative. So we'll just do a quick slice. So what we have here is that chunk that cylinder chunk was taken out, and of course it's cube chunk was taken out of this one. So pretty straightforward. Now, since we are still in the assembly mode, we could basically take any part of this. So let's say this cube, I can use the move tool, I can enlarge, I can shrink, so I have a bunch of different options there. Now, if we are going to do this with the um, with the mesh boolean, uh, we actually have a few options. You know what, let me make one more clone. I'm gonna show you something neat. All right, let's drop these down for a moment. Now, same rules apply. If I actually did the same thing where I've, let's say, taken a cube-like chunk out of this, so right click, change type to negative, or, if I took a cylinder-like chunk out of that cube, so right click, change type, negative, I can just right click mesh boolean or right click mesh boolean. Now I know that looks a little weird, but it actually did take that chunk out. So if I were to slice the plate, we'll have identical parts here and here. So the reason why I made the other ones, I'm going to show you every time you uh, assemble a part, the mesh Boolean option will actually highlight. So if you hit the B key or click up here, you can basically go to the difference tab. You can basically, the first part is the, the main um, part. And then the next one is what you're going to subtract from it or cut out. So let's say the second part would be here. And if you do delete input, what will happen is this will stay, this will go. So we'll hit difference and we can do the same thing here, but in reverse, so mesh Boolean or the B key. So go to difference. So we're going to basically start with the main part and we're going to subtract the cube. And then we hit difference. So if we were to slice this plate, so now we all have identical parts, but there are many different ways to get there. And the main difference is if you want this to be permanent, again, mesh Boolean, if you wanted to make some adjustments later, a normal negative part. Now we'll look at the intersection mesh Boolean. So let's start with something simple like a disc. And I'm just going to clone this. So much like the other ones, we are actually just going to uh, assemble them. So um, pick a shape that you want, and we will select them both, 
right click assemble now the way that the intersection will work is it'll actually just uh, find the over that overlapping parts uh, and you can get rid of the other parts if you'd like so again we're going to hit the B key or just go up to mesh boolean uh, intersection and you basically just select your parts so part one part two um, you can decide to delete um, the other side. So remember the top part is the first one that you selected and then the bottom part is the second. If you hit delete input, it'll delete the second. The first actually gets deleted um, always. So if I just hit intersection, this is just the combination of the two parts. If I go back one and if I turn off the delete input and oops, let's do them both again. And at intersection, it'll keep the, the last one or the one that's on the bottom. All right, so pretty straightforward. And I'll go over another example of how this works. So let's create another primit uh, primitive, but we'll do different sizes. So let's start with, uh, we'll do a cube. And let us do a cylinder. Now they don't have to be the same size. So if you do have an instance where uh, one thing is taller than another, you can do that. Now keep in mind, it will only count for the intersected part. So um, actually I'll show you what I mean. So let's select these both and combine them. So assemble, mesh boolean, intersection, select the first part, select the second part. I'm gonna say delete input, hit intersection, and it will only grab the parts where they were overlapping. So let's start combining some of these uh, mesh booleans into an actual model. All right, so let us create a primitive. And let's add some text to this. All right. And I know you can't see that, so let's change the color, make that red. And you have a choice. Um, you can either do an embedded depth or you can just sync it. I'm just going to sync it down. So we'll just uh, hit text, move tool, bring this down. All right, so I'm actually going to um, create a clone of this, but you know what, let's do it this way. Uh, let us change that into a negative. All right, so that, now that's negative. Let's make a clone. So of course, you know with negatives, if you were to slice this plate, uh, it just cuts into the model. But with negatives, you can't color them. I did uh, create a video uh, not too long ago that shows you how you can add some color to this. Uh, but for this purpose, once you have a negative set, uh, you won't be able to color it, but Remember, we now have mesh boolean as an option. So if we right click, and since this, we can either go to mesh boolean here or we can hit the B key. But since it's already a negative, we can just mesh it. All right, now we've effectively just made that change permanent. And from here, we can actually start to color it. So unfortunately, if you go and try to color this, it's not going to work properly. As you can see, it's not showing up, but this one, since those changes have already been created, we can now color it. So I can actually go into the paint tool and I can color this accordingly. All right, so I just painted the um, back end red and the other side an orange color. Actually, I'm not sure which filament I have in there, but I'll, uh, I'll print this out and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so let's actually make something. If you've been following my other videos, um, you would know some techniques on how to assemble, how to uh, use the negative, how to use the cuts. Uh, so we're gonna make something completely from scratch. And we're going to start with a cone. All right, so let's enlarge this. We'll keep it uniform scale. Uh, we'll set it to 50 on everything. 
All right, so from previous videos, let's say I wanted to hollow this out. You'll know that I would go to uh, the cone itself. I would change the, uh, go to strength. I can remove infill. We're going to actually make a permanent change to this, and that's where mesh boolean comes in. So if I were to, um, let's clone this. So again, this is 50. This is also 50 since it's a clone. We're going to center both of these. Now that second one, I'm actually going to change its size or its scale. Let's set this to, let's set it to 48. So 48 all around. And I'll color it so you can see what's going on. So we'll make that blue for right now. So it looks kind of weird, but one is inside the other. So from here, we're actually going to uh, assemble both of these. So click on both of these, right click, assemble. Now the second one, we're actually going to make this a negative part. So right click, change type, and change to a negative. So if we were to slice this plate, it's empty on the inside. But since we know about mesh Boolean, we can make that a permanent change. So instead of seeing all this mess here, if I were to right click on this, I can go to mesh Boolean. Now that assembly, which was two, is now one and that's a permanent change. Only way to fix this uh, or go back is to hit the undo key. There is no right click and uh, split in the parts, but that's fine because we will take it from here. Let's actually cut this. So we will start here. Let's make a simple cut, form the cut. All right, I actually don't need this, so we can trash it. So let's flip this around, but let's center it first. And we're going to do lay on face. We're going to flip this around. All right. And from here, I'm actually going to right click, add a primitive, and let's do a cylinder. And I'm going to center this. Now, I could use measurements, but I, everything I'm doing right now, I'm just, um, I, I call eyeballing it, but <laughs> basically just uh, guessing. So we want this to fit within that hole, but just barely. All right, so that, a little wider. That should be fine. And we can actually raise this up. And I'm going to move this over to the side. So it's same thing as what we did with the cone. So I'm actually just going to right click, right click on this. We'll clone this. So now we have two. I'll make sure they're both centered. And let's look at the size of this. So we'll go to scale. So one of these, we're going to keep the Z axis the same. Uh, so we're at, let's knock the scale down to, uh, we'll do 47 on the X and Y. And the Z doesn't matter, but I want to make sure that the, um, the one part is above. So we're going to combine these two. So we'll do this one and this one, right click, assemble. And we're going to make sure that inner one is set as a negative part. So right click, change type, negative, now, if we were to slice, oh, actually, one of the negative parts is below, but that's fine. Uh, we don't actually need it to slice there, but we're just going to right click and we will do mesh boolean. And now we have hollowed that out. I guess you can sort of see what I'm making. Uh, so again, we'll make sure that we're centered, make sure that we're centered. And I'm actually just going to flip this one here. Play on face. That is now flipped. And we're going to combine these two assemblies. So right click, assemble. 
And from here, we're just going to raise this up. And just make sure they're both touching. And if we were to slice this plate, Okay, it looks like the actual cylinder didn't show up. So if something weird happens like this, this is where you would just keep going and hitting the undo button, going back, going back. And we might need to make this wall a little bit thicker, so that shouldn't be a big deal. So again, we make sure that we're selecting the inner section, go to scale, and we will set that to 45. And again, all I've done is I've uh, shrunk down um, that inner negative part. All right, so let's click out, click in, right click. And mesh Boolean, hollowed it out, should be a little thicker. All right, make sure everything is center. So center, center, we'll flip this. Assemble. So click on both, hold control, and assemble. And we'll just raise up. This part. In other words, make sure it's touching. And if you wanted to clean up little edges like this, you can just go back into the scale tool and just make it a little bit wider. And check the bottom. That looks good. Now, much like the other one, if we slice and it looks good, we could finalize this with a simple mesh bullying of its own. So if we right click and mesh boolean or again hit the B key and the union and the um, the normal connecting of parts is basically the same. So you can just right click mesh boolean and now it's locked in and I won't be able to make any adjustments but everything looks fine. And usually if you see an error here, we're unable to perform mesh Boolean operational model. Um, some negative parts won't combine. So there's some trial and error in how you use it. All right, so let's print this out and see how it looks. Okay, so this is our very basic negative. This will be our special mesh Boolean. So if you look inside here, it's more than just the back color of red. Bring it a little closer. We are also able to color the side because typically that is not possible if you just have a negative set or even with a modifier. And this isn't anything fancy. So if you wanted to create something, Mesh Boolean actually is really, really neat in finalizing products. And this is a teaser. I haven't shown you guys how to do this, but I'm still practicing uh, how to actually get an image or a logo on something that is curved. All right, so once I nail down all the steps, expect a video about that. That concludes this part of the video. There's actually a lot more you can do with Mesh Boolean, so I'm still wrapping my head around some of the extra features, and I'll be releasing that as we go. But if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. And like always, thank you for watching.